Hello, my name is Anna Harrison, and I am a teacher on assignment for English learners here at the district office. Our department helps all of our 32 schools with their English learner needs. Thank you for joining us today. Our main focus will be on designated ELD for elementary students. In order to understand this, we will also go over some general English learner information that will be helpful for everyone. To access this presentation with all the links, please go to this bit.ly link, pause the video, and type the URL in the browser to access the presentation. This way you will have all the information for future reference. You don't have to memorize all this information because it is a lot, but feel free to take some notes. Let's take a minute to read through the life of an EL. A student becomes an English learner when they first enroll in school and state on their home language survey that they speak another language other than English. These students who are first enrolled in California also take the initial English language proficiency assessment for California or LPAC to determine their English language proficiency for reclassification or English language development support. So here you see English language learners need academic language support in all content areas to develop their English language proficiency, and that is in designated and integrated ELD, which, as we mentioned before, we will be focusing on designated ELD today. Now, only English learners have to take the summative LPAC every year until they are reclassified. Once an English learner is reclassified, they no longer need ELD or need to take the LPAC. However, they are monitored for four years to ensure that they do not fall behind. Uh, for more information on the English learner pathway, please um, go to this link here, English learner pathway. And you can have access to this poster here. Another way to find it is to go to the Ontario Montclair School District Symbol Loop page. There are several tabs here at the top. You will select English Learner. You will select All Things EL. And here you will have access to the English Learner pathway that we just went over. Now I'm going to show you how different scores align to instruction. First, I'm going to go over the summative LPAC scores. So like we mentioned before, every student has to take the summative LPAC uh, every year until they are reclassified. This LPAC assessment is taken in um, the spring, so around February 1st um, of every year. And so your students will either receive a one, a two, a three, or a four on the LPAC. Four is the highest level, and four is what is needed for students to become reclassified. Next, we will talk about the initial LPAC. And again, as we mentioned earlier, the initial LPAC is only for students who have recently enrolled in California schools. They take the initial LPAC within the first 30 days of uh, entering a California school, and a student will score on the LPAC either novice, intermediate, or IFAP, Initial Fluent. And so these students will also be taking the summative LPAC later on that year. But to start off the school year, uh, these, especially for example, TK and Kinder, will all take the initial LPAC and um, they will either score these three here. And then finally, instruction. So instructional. PLDs is, stands for Proficiency Level Descriptors. The Proficiency Level Descriptors are straight from the standards and they are found in all of your curriculum, our adopted curriculum, uh, especially during designated ELD, you will see the words Emerging, Expanding, Bridging. And these are the levels that the student would be falling in for support. So for example, if I know I have a student who has a level two on the LPAC, I know that the level of support that they're going to be needing and I'm looking for in my curriculum would be somewhere in emerging or expanding. As you know, they don't fall perfectly aligned uh, and I'll show you a little bit more about that. But um, also for if I have, if I know my student 
is intermediate, I might, depending on um, how much support they need, I might be looking at expanding or I might be looking at bridging. So this is how these scores from the LPAC, whether it's summative or initial, align to instruction uh, the daily, on a daily basis for um, designated and also integrated. Now, these codes are on your rosters when you get them from Q. The Q roster must be the one with the EL membership on it. Um, so if you have an EL in your class, an English learner, uh, you will see one of these codes, except if they are RFEP, because that means that they have been reclassified, or an IFEP, which means that the um, initial test, initial LPAC that they took uh, showed uh, fluent English proficiency. Other than that, you will see levels one, two, three, or four next to their name. And that means that they are an English learner and that's the most recent LPAC score. You may also see NOV or INT. That means that on the initial LPAC, that is their most recent score. And they have not yet taken the summative LPAC. Once in a while, you will see the code EL, and that is for students who are new to the Ontario Montclair School District and possibly um, have not taken the LPAC at their previous district. Some students do move a lot, and so we don't have recent scores, but we do know that they are an English learner. So um, we won't have uh, necessarily scores on the computer, but you could also look through the students QM uh, to see what their most recent um, uh, LPAC score was, or if they have ever taken the LPAC at a different school. All right, so now let's watch this short video where Dr. Echeverria explains the difference between designated and integrated ELD. We've become aware of the important need to focus part of the school day on instruction for English language learners, That just that language development. And in California, for example, it's called designated ELD. And it differs from what we call integrated ELD, which is teaching content. With integrated ELD, content is primary but at the same time, you're developing students' academic language. During designated ELD, language is primary and content materials are used as the vehicle for developing English language. So during designated ELD, students are really learning about English, how to use it, how uh, to formulate questions, grammar, syntax, advancing their vocabulary, and so forth. And it's really that critical designated time that is so important for our English learners to be able to advance their proficiency. We have so many students that are long-term English learners, and part of the reason is that they haven't had enough language support in their content teaching or had specific language instruction which they need to become fully proficient. So during integrated ELD, the content is primary, but we still wanna pay attention to the language needs and provide those kinds of supports to students to make the content understandable for them, but then also have a specific time of designated ELD or ESL. Designated ELD is instruction provided during a protected time during the day. It is focused instruction on the ELD standards to assist ELs to develop critical English language skills necessary for academic content learning in English. In elementary schools, uh, our designated ELD happens uh, during the school day and you can reach out to your uh, site EL coordinator for more information if you're not sure what this is. Um, in our middle schools, most of our middle schools, our students have a class period with an ILIT class, and that is their designated ELD. But again, if you're not sure, you can check in with the school site's EL coordinator. Uh, it's important to note that ELD is core instruction, and it's not an intervention. I also want to share this 
resource from the California ELD standards. Um, if you Google California ELD standards, you can uh, find it in a really large uh, document. Or like I said before, if you are here um, on the Symbolu page, if you go to the um, newcomer support tile, the ELD standards publication, just these four pages here, rather than looking through the entire book. And so um, let me zoom in to show you. Here, it explains the definition of emerging expanding bridging. And like we said, these are the ones that you will be seeing in your curriculum. And then there's also the three modes of communication that you will definitely be seeing in your WONDERS uh, designated ELD for students to collaborate, collaborate, interpret, or produce. And so these will be then further down broken by emerging level expanding or bridging. And I'll show you that in a second. But this here is a great tool as well, because as you can see, it talks about students emerging, expanding, bridging, but it focuses on the support that you, the teacher, will be providing at each of these levels. And so it's now you can um, correlate where your students are at depending on their level to their um, proficiency and then the support that they're going to need here. And then these are the three modes of communication, collaborative, interpretive, productive. Also, what um, students are expected to be able to do um, in each of these emerging, expanding, and bridging stages for each of the three different modes of communication. So it is a lot to remember. And so we have provided this resource for you. So maybe you can have it printed, you can have it accessible to you. Um, when you're planning for your designated ELD time. So again, under Symbaloo, when you first go to the Ontario Montclair School District, Symbaloo for Teachers, um, at the top, you will go to English Learner. You will go to Newcomer Support, and it will be the ELD Standards Publication, these four pages here. Okay. If you need help and with planning specifically designated ELD, you can reach out. Um, but I do want to show you that this is the uh, Online Wonders um, page. And so when you first log on, you will definitely see um, the different uh, types of uh, curriculum that support that is provided. But when you click on the green one, it will be specifically on designated ELD. And so the students will then have access to, um, to this curriculum and they have their own workbook. Only students who are a level one will have the emerging workbook. All other students two, three, and four will have the expanding bridging workbook and you can identify it by the shapes. Um, not many of your students are going to have this emerging book here. So we do recommend that every single student has their own workbook. Let me log on right now to show you a little bit more on this platform. So like I said, you would click here and let's just say most of your students are expanding. Then you could also then uh, look at the different uh, components of that. And then once you see what it looks like and you decide this is great for your students, then you can go with this. Or if you'd rather do bridging because you feel like your students might need a little bit of less support, you can also go here and it'll uh, differentiate for your students. If you are using the planner, again, you can collapse all of these here and just focus on the green. And if your students are emerging, uh, let's say you're working with specific groups, then you would work on um, emerging. But if you are in charge of maybe the expanding bridging group, then you have um, the different uh, components here to choose from. 
and just depending on what's, what support your students need. This is all in your TE as well. It's just that this is the, the version of online that you can access, but um, your TE is also labeled the exact same uh, codes uh, with these shapes here. And then when your students are um, logging on online, only if they are English learners, they will have the adaptive learning. And so when you assign uh, anything to your students and you are uh, using the actual calendar to plan and you are up to date with your calendar, then the students' work will be pushed out to them. I will show you what it looks like for students. When students log on to their wonders, if again, if you are in line with your calendar, the students will be able to then uh, access this little rainbow here that is called the adapt adaptive learning. Only the English learners will have this rainbow here. All other students, it will be grayed out. And this provides additional support for your English learners to practice online. So again, if you need help planning for a designated ELD, we encourage you to reach out to our English learner department and we are more than happy to schedule a time to meet. And next, I wanna talk about Elevation. Elevation is a platform to get more information about your English learners. This is including RFEP and IFEP students. Elevation uh, also has strategies that are good for all students, but necessary for English learners. Elevation is also where you will be logging on to fill out any forms for reclassification or any forms for RFEP monitoring. If you've never logged on to Elevation, um, you need to use this link here. And you can pause the video to uh, type in this uh, link here to your URL. And um, or if you're under all things EL under the Symbolu page, um, under here, you will see elevation for first time users as well. You would put in your Ontario Montclair School District email, set your own password. Once you do that, again, um, right on Symbolu, uh, either right when you go to log on to Symbolu, you will see the elevation button here. Or once you are in the English Learner tab, you will also see it here. This again is after you have already set your username and password. So I'm going to show you what it looks like for a teacher. Once you log on, you're going to see who your English learners are. This teacher happens to have six. This teacher also happens to have two students who have been reclassified and will be filling out RFET monitoring forms twice a year. Um, if you scroll down, it will tell you um, if from the last LPAC to now if they've decreased or maintained. So you can click on that. If this teacher had any potential reclassification candidates, they would show up here. If this teacher had any newcomers who have been, uh, students who have been enrolled for less than 12 months in US schools, they would show up here. Um, most of these English learners are Spanish speaking. And also you can see uh, a snapshot of the overall scores, oral language, written language, and then listening, speaking, reading, writing. So it breaks down the LPAC even more to kind of see where your students are at. To click on any of these tiles, you can see exactly who the students are. However, for privacy today, we will not be doing that. Um, here you have three tabs. This is just to uh, search for students uh, without look, you can also click here, but you can search for students here. Monitoring will be where you click to be able to fill out any forms. Under instruction is where you have all the strategies to support your English learners. We will be covering a little bit more about uh, the strategies on elevation at a different time, but just know that it is here, it is available, and you're more than welcome to browse. That's all the content that we have for today. Please contact our English Learner Department if you have any questions. Thanks for watching this episode of the Curriculum Cafe. Click like and subscribe to join the cafe for more classroom tips from the TOA team.